Welcome to the Midwest, my name is Jesse, and today I'm answering a question from Edwin, who is part of my Patreon club. I wanna thank you, Edwin, for this question, and it has to do with CO2 tolerance. He asks, why is it important that we have a high tolerance to CO2? Well, let's talk about that today. This is just gonna be a nice quick video that, that gives you the cliff notes as far as why it's important to have a high CO2 tolerance. And in reality, it's not necessarily the, the case that we need to raise our CO2 tolerance, it's that we need to keep our CO2 tolerance from coming down. We need to be able to tolerate enough CO2 so that we're not constantly over breathing. You see, when we over breathe, okay, so when we're, we're just like, you know, mouth breathing or just sitting there breathing really hard for sometimes no reason, we can reduce our tolerance to CO2. And what happens is, whenever that happens, we become accustomed to breathing fast. Now, if you're accustomed to breathing fast and over breathing, you're likely to put yourself into a fight or flight state, or at very least be preventing yourself from fully relaxing. So one of the reasons why we want to maintain a high CO2 tolerance is to prevent ourselves from sending signals to our autonomic nervous system to become fight or flight and or aroused, okay? And I talk more about this in my book, A Practical Guide to Breathwork. You can take a look at the links below. I go into great detail there. I'm just giving you some clip notes now. Another reason why we want to have a high CO2 tolerance is because the more CO2 we can tolerate, the more that is flowing through our blood, the, the better we can diffuse oxygen to our tissues. You see, when you don't have enough CO2, the red blood cells in your body, in the blood, they will hold on to those oxygen molecules. And what happens is it's called the Bohr effect and it holds on to those oxygen, all the oxygen, and it will not allow your tissues to fully utilize that oxygen. So in order to fully get the most out of every breath and out of our blood flow to our tissues and fully oxygenate those tissues, we need to be able to have a regular level, at least, of CO2. And if we have a low tolerance to CO2, again, we're gonna be shedding way more than what we need to shed, and that's gonna cause issues when it comes to tissues. One of the things that has been shown in connection with CO2 is that if you have a higher level of CO2 in your blood, you have better vasodilation. And vasodilation, of course, is whenever your blood vessels are open up and so that the blood flow can be free and running through your veins uh, without constriction. So, so if you have, for instance, oxygen is a vasoconstrictor and CO2 is a vasodilator. If you have more CO2 in your, in your blood, your blood vessels will be opened and they will be ready to let all that blood flow. It could also help open up your sinuses. And that is just one of those interesting things that you'll also notice whenever you're doing light breathing and you're doing uh, you know, really slow, high CO2 tolerance training. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to train CO2 tolerance and improve your CO2 tolerance, take a look at the links below. I, I write about it in my book and I cover it in my online courses. It's something that, of course, if, if you want to come meet me and, and work with me individually, you can also do that as well. Uh, I do a lot of workshops around the country. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for the question, Edwin. Don't forget to go out there and be kind to one another.